Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to this brand new year. Today I'm going to be sharing 10 ways that you can simplify your life in 2024. Like many of the rest of you, I have been working on my goals, short-term one-year goals, three-year goals, five-year goals, and even 10-year goals. And I always find that I'm way more successful and more easily able to focus when things are simplified, when my systems are simplified, when my life is simplified and my goals, and I have a clear direction and a clean slate. So today I'm going to be sharing what's worked for me and some things that you can use in your own life to bring more simplicity to this brand new year. Number one is to embrace monotasking. Stop trying to do all the things. I know, especially at the beginning of the year, when you're listing out all of your goals, I have to get onto myself about this sometimes too. I'll just list off all the things that I want to do. And then I start feeling overwhelmed already, you know, like, oh my gosh, I have so many things that I want to do and it's already January. And how can I get all this done? And it just, it gets out of control. That overwhelm can really cause you to procrastinate before you even take steps in any direction. Not only is it overwhelming to try to multitask and focus on all the things at once, but it also is really inefficient. So if you stick to one big task per day, just the one thing that you're going to be focusing on and not focus on anything else until that one thing is done, you get so much hyper productive energy going toward that one task and you're more likely to get it done, even get it done faster and be able to move on to other things that are just bonus icing on the cake. I've seen people write their one thing on a post-it note. I've seen people use apps that have them write in their one thing every day and it keeps it on the back screen so that they're able to see it anytime they open up their phone because we need reminders. It can be really easy to get sucked into X, Y, and Z, all of these things coming at you via email and messaging. And if you're working in a team, then with other team members. But when you have that one thing that you're focusing on, even if you do have to stop and tend to other things, it helps you to redirect and refocus and it keeps things really simplified. Today, my one thing is recording this video. Check. Number two is to focus on the next right step. So many times when we don't take action, it's because something feels too big because we haven't really broken it down to what the next right step is. I heard a great example of this in a training that I recently took from April Perry. She teaches people how to create command centers. And so she was talking about a client of hers who was wanting to create a command center, but couldn't seem to take any action forward. So they were trying to reverse engineer and figure out, well, what is it that's hanging you up? And she said, you know, I just, I don't have enough space in my living room to be able to create a command center. And so April said, well, you know, is there anything that you could remove or anything that doesn't need to be there that would make it easier for you to have a command center in there? And so the lady said, yeah, you know, I have this giant bookshelf that's taking up way too much space that I need to sell or I need to get rid of somehow. So, okay, so selling, that's gonna be your next right step. You need to take some pictures of the bookshelf and get it posted and try to sell that. And Lily's like, yeah, but every time I go to try to sell it, I need to get measurements for it and I can't find my tape measure. So her next right step was to order a tape measure, to buy a tape measure, because that one little piece was holding up the whole chain of the process to getting her the space that she needed to take the next step and create an air command center. And so many times I find myself in that same predicament and I hear other people too in that same predicament. I was recently working on my course and creating the modules and the lessons to go with the modules. And every time I would get to module two in those lessons, I would feel hung up. I would feel like I just couldn't move forward. And I kept passing it by and creating the lessons in module three and then moving on to module four. And every time I would come back to module two, it just felt like I was stuck there. And so finally, I pulled out my journal, which this is a new journal that I got from a couple of friends of mine for Christmas. Thank you very much. And I just started brainstorming every hiccup that I was running into and every thought that I was having as I was going through the module two lessons to see what it was that was causing me to not take steps forward. And it turns out there was some information that I was hoping to learn first from a book that I was reading that I was hoping to incorporate in one of the sections or actually a couple of the different lessons. And that was holding me back. So I was like, my next right step is actually to finish this book that I'm reading so that I feel like I have all of the information that I'm wanting to implement inside of these lessons. And there were just like tons of things like that that kept popping up that I was holding myself back by not taking what was actually the next right step. I did a full brain dump and then I sat and I 
itemized everything out that needed to be done in order to move forward. And it made it so much easier. It doesn't feel heavy anymore because I know exactly what my next right step is and I'm not just stuck. The third way to simplify your life is to put stops in place. Put automatic stops in place to keep you from doing things that are going to suck you away, things that are going to get you all distracted and going down the rabbit hole. I recently downloaded an app on my phone that's called OneSec, and I can apply it to any apps that I want. Right now I have it applied to my YouTube studio because I found that when I was sitting and I didn't know what to do next or I was just bored or you know I was supposed to be doing something else and didn't feel like it, I would pull up some of these apps like YouTube Studio or my emails or ClickUp and I would just like scroll through and start studying little things that really didn't need my attention. And then I would feel like I had no free time to myself at the end of the day. And so I got this app called OneSec that you can apply to any app. And what it does is every time you go to open said app that you have it set up for, like YouTube Studio for me, it causes me to take a deep breath before I open the app. So whenever I go to open YouTube Studio, it causes me to take a deep breath and exhale before I open the app. It forces me to give myself a second. And then I get to choose down here from the big button, which is easier to push that says, no, I don't wanna go there anymore, or the little text underneath that says, yes, I would still like to go to YouTube Studio. So it doesn't keep me from being able to access things if I need to, but it does make me take a break. Again, that app is called OneSec, but there are tons of apps out there like that that will help to block you from the things that keep you from being productive and suck up all of your mental energy. And so this really helped me to simplify and give myself that free time back where I could sit there and either take moments to myself and not feel like I was working or take better actions and take actual next right steps. The fourth way to simplify your life is to automate savings. If you want to be able to take a vacation once a year, but you never feel like you have a big lump sum of vacation money, if you were just to take out, you know, $50 maybe from every paycheck or set aside small amounts per week, then you would have that lump sum and you wouldn't even notice it was gone. And that simplifies the whole process. So you're not feeling like you're having to toil and save and, you know, like rack up a whole bunch of money or work a lot of overtime right before you want to go do something because you haven't been saving the rest of the year. It just makes things simpler and you don't think about it. Number five is to minimize bulk. Any areas of your home that feel bulky and overrun, like the laundry or the dishes or the paperwork, then you will have a more streamlined, simplified space, and that's going to give you back a ton of your time so that your life feels a little more streamlined and simplified. I was actually just talking earlier about towels and how much bulk towels alone can add to things like your laundry. And if you have a family of four who are taking a shower every day and they're grabbing a new towel after every shower, at the end of one week, that's 28 towels. That's three to four loads of laundry right there in just one week from using a towel a day per member of the family. And so when you think about things like that and how can you reduce the bulk and can you hang your towel to dry instead of using and grabbing a brand new one every time, you know, it can make a really big difference in your day-to-day -day life. Number six is to simplify your purse or wallet. For many of us, our purse or our wallet is kind of like our home away from home. It has the things that we need to grab when we're away. And so simplifying the number of things that you're toting around with you and simplifying the number of credit cards that you're keeping on your body at any given time that you're more likely to put more money on can be another helpful tool to simplify your life. If you're not having to dig through and search through mounds of stuff every time you go to the store, and if you're not having to go check five to 10 different credit cards to make sure that everything's paid on time, your life is just gonna be a lot simpler. Number seven is to use time blocks. That really helps you to take number one, which was to focus on your one thing. It helps you to add structure to that and take it to the next level. So for example, for me, because I'm majorly introverted and it takes a lot of energy for me to be really social, I put all of my meetings and all of my social events, when at all possible, on Thursdays. Thursdays have just for years now been my meeting and my social days. That makes my just one thing easier to plan because I know that Thursdays, I probably have meetings. That will likely be my one thing for that day. So if I'm planning my calendar in the long term and I want to know, well, what should I be focusing on that day? 
well, I know that there's a really good chance that I should be focusing on meetings, socializing, communicating, correspondence on Thursdays. So that's just one example of time blocking, making things a lot simpler. And when you can plan out big chunks of your time like that based on a weekly basis or a monthly basis or even a daily basis, if there's something that you like to do from two to three every day, then that makes everything much easier when you're able to chunk down and block that time and just know without any extra planning that that's what you're going to be doing. Also, when you time block, you're not over scheduling and over committing yourself, which is one thing that can cause us to really feel chaotic and totally unsimplified is when we have all of these different things going on. So it's a great way to help you with monotasking and it's a great way to help you with determining and following through with your next right step because you already have that time set aside and you're very clear with a realistic amount of time that you have available for other things. Number eight is to implement boundaries and borders. I think of this as being equally for your space and for your relationships. Relationships and having like interpersonal boundaries, obviously really important in order to keep things simple, keep people on the same page, not have like awkward stuff come out throughout the year that stresses everybody out. But even for your stuff, when you have spatial constraints, when you have firm boundaries for your belongings and for different categories and everything has a home and that home is not just like out sprawled across a surface or across the floor somewhere. It gives this whole container of expectation for where things are supposed to go. It keeps things secluded to their areas so that they're not spilling out all over the place, adding to clutter and adding to the chaos. Number nine is to invest in automated cleaning tools. The first thing that comes to my mind is my RoboVac. I know they're not for everybody, but I swear by my RoboVac. If I could buy another one for upstairs, and hopefully I will at some point, I totally would. It's like it doesn't really have enough battery span to make it all the way downstairs and then come and do all the way upstairs. So we end up not really using it upstairs, but downstairs, it's, it's amazing. I can set up clocks for it, like alarms and timers for when it goes off and it'll go off by itself. It avoids stuff that's on the floor. And I very rarely have to vacuum, which is awesome. So it really simplifies my home maintenance process, having something that's automated like that. But even like on a grander scale, Maybe an upgrade for you would be to get a dishwasher or a washing machine, anything that can help you to automate processes inside of your home to keep things clean so that that's not taking all of your time and attention, I think is wonderful. And number 10 is to be nice. If you're somebody who's a little rough around the edges, maybe this is the year that you try being a little nice. Throw in a positive, playful emoji or two and wait and see how the other person responds. It's it's just, it makes things so much more pleasant. And because it's more pleasant, there's less friction. And we all know when there's less friction, things just feel simpler. When there's a lot of friction, things feel really complicated and frustrating. And then you have this whole emotional whirlwind on top of all of the other stuff you have going on every day. But when you're just nice to people without being a pushover, without having to say yes to everything or answer every single phone call, when you're nice to people, life is much more simple. So I have a lot of people who help me out on the back end of my business, help me with admin things, help me with checking emails, help me with even editing these videos and creating a lot of stuff that I use inside of my business. And I always try to be super nice to these people. And I find that when I have that demeanor and that relationship with people on my team, they perform better. They're happier to go above and beyond and to provide really great work. They're not just trying to do the bare minimum because they don't really like me anyway and they're just getting it done. It makes things simpler being nice to people as opposed to always being the hammer and always like, you know, having a problem and telling people what they're doing wrong. You know, I have no problem with giving corrections, giving instructions, showing ways that things could be done better. But I always try to focus on having a positive attitude while I'm having those conversations, because whether you're talking about work or home or just relationships with yourself or with other people, being nice is going to get you further. All right, that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you've gained some good insights from these 10 ways to simplify your year in 2024, and I'll chat with you next week.